In this video, we work our last example of homogeneous polar differential equations. Now on the surface, this one doesn't look homogeneous polar, but if you remember this property from um, college algebra or pre-calculus, you can see that it is homogeneous polar. Remember from algebra, if you have natural log of A minus natural log of B, that can be written as natural log of A over B. Um, since that's the case, this differential equation can be written um, in terms of x over y. And just as a, as a quick review, remember a differential equation is homogeneous polar um, if it can be written this way. So if you can write dy dx as a function of y over x or x over y, um, the differential equation is homogeneous polar. We're going to stick to y over x, but um, it could just as easily be x over y and it would still be homogeneous polar. So um, with this property in mind, this natural log of x minus natural log of y can be rewritten as natural log of x divided by y. And that's starting to look a lot like this y over x. Now here, I've got two terms that have x's as factors, so I can take an x out of those guys when I factor an x out of these two, I'm left with natural log of x. This x times natural log of x gives me that first term. And x times negative natural log of y gives me the second term. And now I've got that natural log of x minus y again. It's here, just like it was there. And this can be written as natural log of x over y. Um, this is natural log of x minus natural log of y. I think I may have misspoke there for a second. Okay, so this differential equation can be rewritten in this form. It's y times natural log of x over y times dx equals um, x times natural log of x over y minus y times dy. And I claim that this differential equation can be written in this form. So in order to make this look like this, the first thing I'll do is I'll divide both sides by dx. And that's going to give me a dy dx over here. Um, because dy is dy dx times dx and the dx's cancel and you end up with this dy dx. So these really aren't um, like a differential divided by a differential, but you can treat them like that. You can treat them that way and the algebra actually works out just fine. Um, that's gonna get that dy and the dx on the same side so that it's like that. That's what I want. And I want the coefficient in front of that dy dx to be one. So I'll divide both sides by this x times natural log of x over y as well. And that's legal as long as you do the same thing to both sides. And now we're here. So then if I switch the sides, this will give me dy dx equals y times natural log of x over y, all divided by x times natural log of x over y minus y. Now if I'm trying to make this look like this, so I've got functions of y over x everywhere. Since this is a y to the first, and I would really like to have a y over x out front, I will take the numerator and denominator and divide by x. So I'll divide this by x and divide all of this by x. And the hope is that after doing that, we can write this right-hand side entirely in terms of uh, y over x. It's gonna be a function of y over x only. So I'll have a y divided by x out front times natural log of x over y. And then this term divided by x, the x's will reduce, and we end up with natural log of x over y here. And then over here, I have minus y over x. OK. Now, on the surface, it might not seem that you've got a function of y over x over here, because sometimes instead of y over x, you've got an x over y inside those logarithms. But um, x over y and y over x are um, intimately related, they're reciprocals of each other. Um, y over x is the same as 1 over x over y. 
If I take one over this fraction, I just flip it and I get that one. Um, so if this is V, then this over here is one over one over V. I know that seems a little strange, but um, if I take one over V and I take its reciprocal, so I'm flipping it, I get V back. So that means that when V is Y over X, that X um, over Y is one over V. Or if you want, you could call that V to the negative one. Okay, so I was able to write dy dx as this, this function over here, um, which is almost entirely in terms of y over x. So um, y over x is there, so that's good. And x over y is the same as y over x raised to the negative one power. And so that's going to be a y over x to the negative 1 as well. And now I've got y over x's everywhere. So that's a y over x, that's a y over x, that's a y over x. Um, so I, I was able to write my differential equation in this form. And that's good. That's what makes it homogeneous polar. And that's our first step. Whenever you're solving a homogeneous polar equation, you verify that the differential equation is homogeneous polar. And there are two ways of doing that. You can either verify that this function is homogeneous polar and this function, or excuse me, this function is a homogeneous function of degree n. And this is a homogeneous function of degree n, as we did in the last two examples. Or you can just solve for dy dx and show that you can rewrite this function on the right-hand side as a function of y over x only. So rather than verifying that the functions were homogeneous functions of the same degree, I did this instead. Um, so that's our first step in solving the differential equation, is recognizing it as homogeneous polar by writing it in this form. And if you're not sure it can be written in this form, you would want to verify that these are two homogeneous functions of the same degree which we went over in the last couple of videos. But if you are able to write it in this form, you're here and you're good. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to let V equal Y over X. Then take that equation and solve for Y. So Y is equal to V times X. And you want to think of V as a function of X. And then you want to compute dy dx. And the reason we're doing that is because we want dy dx in terms of v, and we want all of this in terms of v. And if v is y over x, I've got a v there, and a v there, and a v there, and a v there. So this side is already the function of v. It's already this function of y over x, where y over x will be replaced by v. Now we need to replace this side with um, expressions involving v and x only. We don't want any y's anywhere. So we're going to let v equal y over x, solve for y, that implies that y equals v times x, and we want to think of v as a function of x. If v is a function of x, then the derivative of this requires a product rule. If this is my first function, and this is my second function, We'll get derivative of the first times the second, and then we'll add the derivative of the second with respect to x times the first. Now remember, this is just derivative notation. It says take the derivative with respect to x of whatever's in those brackets. So the derivative of, uh, with respect to x of x is just one. So you compute dy dx, and now I can replace dy dx with this. So you, you can write dy dx entirely in terms of v and x. And you can write the right-hand side entirely in terms of v um, and other functions, but there are no x's. And that means we can write the entire differential equation in terms of v and x only. So that's our next, our next step, our next goal. 
um, is we have decided to use this substitution because the differential equation is homogeneous polar. Now we're going to write the DE in terms of V and X. And this will always result in a separable differential equation. So the derivative on that left-hand side can be replaced by dv dx times x plus v. And this expression on the right-hand side can be written in terms of v. That's v times natural log of v to the negative 1, all divided by a natural log of v to the negative 1 minus v. Um, and this is always separable, so you want to go ahead and separate the variables from here. We're really solving the separable equation. Okay, and the way we solve a separable differential equation is we get all the v's on one side and all of the x's on the other. Now all the x's are already on this side. Unfortunately, that dx is in the denominator and it needs to be in the numerator. I need to have a function of x times dx equals a function of v times dv. Um, so we had to do a little bit of algebra. So um, I need this v on the other side with all of these other v's. So we'll subtract v from both sides. And that will land us right there. And then we will get a common denominator. And the LCD of this and 1 is just itself. So we're going to multiply by natural log of v to the negative 1 minus v over itself. And so we have a dv dx times x there. And if you want, you can call that x over 1. I will call it x over 1. Um, show you why in just a minute. And then on this side, I want to distribute that negative v to both terms. So we have v natural log of v to the negative 1 minus v natural log of v to the negative 1. That works out. And then a negative v times a negative v is a positive v squared. So those guys are gone. We have the same denominator, so you want to keep that common denominator. All right. Now, I've got all of my v's over here except for that dv. I can't just divide by dv because then I'd have a 1 over dv over here and a 1 over dx over there. And we need the dx and the dv to be in the numerator. Um, so to get the dx and the dv in the numerator with the functions on the appropriate side, we're just going to take the reciprocal of both sides. So um, flip this. That's legal because of something that we learned in Calculus 1 about derivatives of inverse functions. And then you want to flip the function on the, the right-hand side as well. And now you've got um, a function of x times dx over here, and you've got a function of v over here and a dv in the denominator. So let's multiply both sides by dv. And those dv's kind of cancel because of the way differentials are defined x dv times dv is the definition of the differential of x. So we end up with this 1 over x times dx over here, and then this guy on the other side. Now there are a couple of different ways that you can solve this. Um, what I would recommend is to, let's, let's do a little bit of algebra. Since we've got v to some power in here, let's take that negative 1 out front. Here's a rule from algebra. If you have a, a constant times natural log of a, that's the same as natural log of a to the n. So if you have an exponent inside, you could bring that out front. That would make that look a little bit nicer. So we'll have a negative 1 times v, natural log of v. And it's multiplied by v to the negative 2. So I'm going to bring that up to the numerator. And then if I take this negative v and I multiply it by v to the negative 2, um, or alternatively, you could just take negative v and divide by v squared, you're going to get a 1 over v for that. So this divided by v squared ends up being this. 
because I've used that property to bring that negative one out front. Um, and then this V over V squared is one over V. And I've got a rule for that. And that I can evaluate using uh, integration by parts. So we've separated the variables. We've got all the V's on this side, all the X's on this side, the DX is in the numerator, the DV is in the numerator. And now we want to um, anti-differentiate both sides. So we're solving the separable differential equation by separating the variables and then anti-differentiating. You have to differentiate both sides with respect to the appropriate variable. Left hand side is really nice, so I think I'll just do that. That's the um, natural log of the absolute value of x. That's nice and easy. And this negative 1 over v, I can do that as well. That's negative natural log of the absolute value of v. But this piece, the negative um, integral of v squared times natural log of v dv, that's going to require a little bit more work. So in this one, I ask myself, do I have a basic rule for that? And I don't because it's a product and we don't have a product rule for antiderivatives. Um, next thing I would ask myself is, will u substitution work? And there really isn't a natural choice for u here. Uh, I don't have a function nested inside another function. So um, u substitution is not appropriate here. So the next thing I would try is integration by parts. Now, one thing that complicates this is just the presence of the letter V. When we use integration by parts, usually we call this the integral of U times DV, and we've got DV here for everything else already, unfortunately. Um, but that's okay, you just have to distinguish between this V and the Vs um, in your integration by parts formula. So um, we can do that. Now, if I am using integration by parts, I want to make a little two by two table. Part of this is u, everything else is dv. And since I'm using this v for something else, I'm going to call these v's v stars. And I'll call these u stars just to make everything from the integration by parts formula a star, have a star on it. But I want u to be um, the function with the simplest derivative, and dv is everything else. Well, Back in calculus two, we learned that if there's a logarithm in our integration by parts problem, that's our u. If there's an inverse trig function, then that's our u. And if there are no logs and no inverse trig functions, usually u is the polynomial. Um, but in this case, we've got a logarithm. So we're gonna let u star be natural log of v and everything else is dv. So we're gonna have this v to the negative two times dv. Just don't confuse these Vs with these Vs. It's the only reason why I put those stars there. Now, to finish the um, application of integration by parts, like this piece and this piece, they come together. That's V to the negative 2 dV. That's V star. This is the integral of U star times dV star. The integral of U dV is UV minus the integral of V times du. So we have to find du star to find the derivative of this, and we need to find the antiderivative of this to fill in our table. Well, the derivative of natural log of v is 1 over v dv. Well, it's 1 over v, and then the differential is that times dv. And then the antiderivative of v to the negative 2 is v to the negative 1, add 1 to the exponent, and then divide by the new exponent. So we're going to have v to the negative 1 times negative 1. Then according to our integration by parts formula, the integral of u dv is u times v minus the integral of v du. The way you do this, if you set up this two by two table the same way every time, is you do u times v minus the integral of v times du. So that's what I'm going to do. So we have natural log of the absolute value of x equals negative natural log of the absolute value of v. And then we had a minus, and then we had u times v. In our case, uh, u star was natural log of v, and v star was negative uh, v to the negative 1. 
So I have negative v to the negative 1 times natural log of v minus the integral of v du. So I'm doing this diagonal. I'm multiplying these two guys. So I've got negative v to the negative 1 times 1 over v du d. A negative times that negative makes that a positive. Now careful here, you have to simplify this first. You can think of that as a v to the negative one as well, right? Because if you have one over x to some power, that's the same as x to the same power, but negative. So that's a v to the negative one times a v to the negative one. And if we're adding, or if we're multiplying two exponentials, or two power functions either way, however you wanna look at it, um, the bases are the same, you just add the exponents. This is v to the negative one times v to the negative one. Negative times negative makes that a positive. That negative times that integral is gonna be a negative. And then I have v to the negative one times v to the negative one. We add the exponents, that's v to the negative two. And you ask yourself if you have a rule for that, and we do, that's great. So we add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. Dividing by negative one um, is the same as multiplying by negative one. Don't forget to add your C. Okay, so all of that was solving the separable differential equation in terms of U, or the separable di differential equation in U and, I keep saying U, in V and X. Um, so we wrote the differential equation in this form. We said v is gonna be y over x. So y is v times x. We computed uh, dy dx using the product rule. And then we wrote the differential equation in terms of v and x, and we solved the separable equation, which required all of this work. Okay. So now we're here. The last thing we need to do is back substitute. Because remember, v is just something that we made up so that we could solve this problem. We said, if we let v equal this, then the differential equation will be separable. And since the differential equation is separable, well, then I can solve it. And then I, all I have to do is back substitute to get um, a different, or an equation involving y. So remember what v is in terms of y. You're just gonna replace your v with y over x. And then if possible, we usually like to get y by itself. One over V, that's one over Y over X is X over Y. And that's another one over V, which is X over Y. And I think that's gonna be really difficult to solve for um, Y, because I've got a Y in the denominator here and a Y in the numerator here inside a logarithm. So let's just end it there. We'll call this an implicit family of solutions. No guarantees that it's a general solution since the differential equation was nonlinear. But if I had an initial condition, I could use the initial condition to find the value of C. Now, we didn't have one in this video, but we did have one in example two. So you can watch that video if you want to. Now, if you're asking yourself, well, what on earth is that? What does that mean? Well, this implicit family of solutions um, is a relationship between x and y. If there's some function y out there that satisfies this equation and also satisfies this differential equation, um, then we call that function at the end an implicit solution. Now, we haven't actually proven that there's, any, there's a function that satisfies this and satisfies this differential equation that we've written right here. Um, but we're, what we've done when we solve for this implicit solution or this relation is we've said that if there is a function out there that satisfies this differential equation, then that function has to satisfy uh, this equation or actually 
most of the time it will satisfy this equation um, unless it's a singular solution that's not a member of the family. And that's another story. Uh, but we're gonna stop here and call this an implicit family of solutions.